Now, this is a, a study that was done at Harvard, uh, um, from Harvard, at the Harvard Medical School. Prescription, prescription drugs associated with reports of violence towards others by Thomas Moore, Joseph uh, Glenn Mullen, uh, and, you know, and, um, oh, oh, Kurt, we don't want to leave Kurt out, Kurt Furberg. Furberg. I wonder if, he, if Kurt ever got teased about that much in school. That's probably why he went to Harvard Medical School to get everybody to shut up. You know. Okay, so now here's what they say. Violence towards others is a seldom studied drug, is a seldom studied adverse drug event, and an atypical one, because the risk of injury extends to others. Objective of the study. Okay. To identify the primary suspects in adverse drug events, uh, describing thoughts or acts of violence towards others, and assess the strength of the association. Okay, now they're going to talk about whoops. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, scrolling around here. Okay, methodology. This, to identify, uh, oh, from the, um, oh, the objective. To identify the primary suspects in adverse drug event reports, describing thoughts or acts of violence towards others, and assess the strength of the association. Okay, their methodology. Move this up a little bit. I keep moving it the wrong way. Okay, from the Food and, um, from the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, adverse event reporting systems data, we extracted all serious uh, adverse event reports for drugs with 200 or more cases received from 2004 through September 2009. We identified any case report indicating homicide, homicidal ideation, physical assault, physical abuse, or violence related to related symptoms. Okay, now here's the results. Pull that up. Okay. We identified 1,527 cases of violence disproportionately reported for 31 drugs. Primary suspect drugs included varinicline, an aid to smoking sensation. <laughs> Can you imagine that? You go into, you know, you're having some problems with, with smoking, right? So you go to the psychiatrist saying, you got any, or the doctor, you got anything? You know, yeah. Some, um, we, we got some varinicline. It's a weaker and a mixed, and mixed for antipsychotic drugs and absent for all but, oh. Uh, so 11 and, they, they also, Sorry about that. You know, it's hard to, I'm trying to look at this and show you the words on the page at the same time. I'll just read it to you here. 11 antidepressants, six sedative hypnotics, and three drugs for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Well, those things are always methamphetamine, right? You can give kids for ADD or ADHD. The evidence of an association was weaker and mixed for antipsychotic drugs and absent for all but one anticonvulsant -convul mood stabilizers. Two or fewer violence cases were reported for 84.7% uh, of all of valuable drugs, suggesting that, any, that an association with this advert event is unlikely for those drugs. Conclusion. Acts of violence towards others are a genuine and serious adverse drug event associated with a relatively small group of drugs. A serious adverse drug event associated with a relatively small group of drugs. Varinicline, boy, they really hate that one, which increases the availability of dopamine and antidepressants with serotonergic effects were the most strongly and consistently implicated drugs. Ser in other words, SSRIs. Okay, serotonergic. Serotonin, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. That's what it is, right? That's what they're using. And they're, this study, a Harvard-based study, links violence to the use of these antidepressants and, and other drugs as well. 
such as uh, ADHD drugs, meth. Prospective studies to evaluate systematically the side effects. Uh, this side effect are needed to establish the incidence, confirm differences among drugs, and identify additional common features. You know, it's like most of these studies always end up with more study is needed. You know, if you give us some more money, we'll do it, right? Now, here's the kill shot, right? We've established that there's a, that there's a definite. Are you listening, Carl? Carl Wolfson, you know, funny man. Morning funny man, KPOJ. Are you listening to this? Because this is the kill shot. Here's another Harvard study from the Harvard Medical School. And listen, this isn't the only one. There are other studies that confirm the same damn thing, all right? Harvard University researchers. I'll try to do this one for you. Harvard University researchers of fluoride brain studies concludes our results support the possibility of neural development. I can't do this. Support the possibility of adverse effects of fluoride exposures on ch children's children's neural development. It was published online July 20th in the Environmental Health Perspectives, a U.S. National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences journal, which is reporting, uh, which is reported by the uh, New York State Coalition opposed to fluoridation. Okay, the children in the author writes of this study writes, the children in high fluoride areas had significantly lower IQ than those who lived in low fluoride areas. Significantly lower IQ. This is what it's doing to kids. This is from water. This is from fluoride exposures, you know, from wherever, right? Such as the water, your tap water. Further, the EPA says fluoride is a chemical with substantial evidence of developmental neurotoxicity, brain poison, poisonous to the brain. And you know what? This coincides with what we've noticed as homeopath about the action of fluoride on the brain, which is brain atrophy, atrophy of the brain, all right? See, they're just confirming what we already knew, these new studies. Water was the only fluoride source in the studies reviewed and was based on high water fluoride levels. However, they point out research by Ding suggested that low water fluoride levels also had significant negative associations with children's intelligence. Now, that should give everybody cause to pause. You know, if, if these guys are so hot, are so hot, you know, to get this into, into Portland water and get this, or keep it in your water supply, Let's see them take it for a while, all right? Do a proving, what we homeopaths call a proving, on the crude substance. I mean, we take it in potency, which is the dilute, right? To see what the action of the potency will have on people. But let's see these guys, you know, take some of their own medicine, all right? So of course, it's not medicine, it's poison. It's a flat out poison. It's so poisonous, you can't even store it in a glass bottle. It'll eat right through it. That's how caustic. That's how corrosive it is. It'll eat right through glass. It'll eat through concrete. You spill some. If there's a truck call, you know, hauling this stuff down the road and it tips over and gets someone gets on the concrete, it'll burn right through the concrete. You remember that alien? Remember the alien in Alien, the movie Alien? It has this this acid that would burn through everything. That's like fluoride. Fluoride does the same kind of thing. It has an affinity for silica and other, and other chemicals. It has the highest electronegativity, which means that it's, it pulls. It'll pull in other ions to it, all right? And it'll set things up. It'll set it up in a molecular self-assembly. And, you know, one part per million is enough to do it, all right? And, homeo and here's the home from the homeopathic materia medica from 100 years ago, the, what the causes of it are. All right, I can read this. You can read. Oh, you can read along with read along with Jack here. Okay, brain atrophy, hypersexuality, nymphomania, nymphomania. You hear that? Oh, you're probably glad to hear that, huh? Hey, give me some of the fluoride. I want some of that nymphomania. Yeah. Satyriasis. Satyriasis is the male version of nymphomania. Okay, hypersexuality. That's what that is. In addition, flaking skin from red blotches, clinical tumors. 
Here's another keloid tumors, which is an abnormal proliferation of scar tissue on the site of surgical incisions. Tumors on, the, on female genitalia, tumors on female on, on, on the ovaries, of course they're female. I haven't heard any guys having ovaries lately. Uh, tumors on uh, fibroid tumors on ovaries, especially on the right side. Uh, but here's some interesting, some interesting um, m mental things that go along with with uh, fluoride. The fear of cancer. See, there's a psychology of these substances as well. I mean, everything has a psych. Most things, a lot of things, have a psychology to them. Most substances. You know, and there's, so there's, there's a lot of mental symptoms, psychological symptoms that are, that are associated with these things, such as aversion to members of the family. I know that sounds weird, but that's what, that's what they've noted. Aversion to certain persons. Difficult comprehension. Difficult concentration. Delusions of danger. A feeling of danger. Get this one. Del the delusion that the marriage must dissolve. The delusion of thinks he's, he's got to get rid of the servants. Sounds like, like Mitt Romney, doesn't it? Fire everybody. Got to fire everybody. Alcoholism. Discontented, displeased, dissatisfied, etc. Uh, especially after eating. It's a, almost like a unique symptom. Some of these are very unique symptoms to, you know, to uh, uh, fluoride, such as wanting to get rid of people. Okay, is this starting to add up? You see what I'm talking about here? All right, here's fear of cancer, fear of people, fear of people. Forget, uh, forgetful in the evening. Uh, forgetful, in, but in the morning, ameliorate. So in other words, they start remembering in the morning. Unique symptom to, for, to uh, fluoride. Forgetful to wind his watch. Unique symptom of fluoride. You know, maybe, we should, maybe I should send Carl, Carl in the morning, you know, his watch. A watch. You know, here's a watch. And then see if he winds it. Hatred. Uh, here's another unique symptom to fluoride. Hatred of persons who are absent, but you're better on seeing them. So, you know, when the guy leaves, I hate that guy. You know, and then when you see him, oh, hi, how you doing? You know, good to see you again. You know, rush of ideas, imbecility, indifference, a lot of indifference here, apathy, indifference of business affairs, indifference to the family, indifference of, um, to important things to do, indifference to loved ones, insanity, madness. Irritability, uh, irritability sends the nurse home. Get out of here! You know, I don't want to take my medicine. Here, take your fluoride. No, I don't want to take my fluoride. Get out of here! Lustful, lascivious. Ooh, lascivious, lascivious. Is that lascivious? Lascivious means lustful. Okay, sexually active. Okay, active memory, recollect, reco involuntary recollection. This is a fairly unique symptom. There's a couple other remedies that have this attached to it, too. It's involuntary uh, memory, uh, active recollection of things. So it looks like suddenly, oh, I forgot. <laughs> I suddenly remembered. I forgot. Um, I know what I forgot. Uh, here's a weakness of memory. Mirth, hilarity, liveliness, etc. Mistakes in spelling, mistakes in words, misplacing words, uh, wrong words, using the wrong words, opposite words, putting right for left or vice versa, that sort of thing. Nymphomania, I guess we've already been over that. Rage, fury, satiriasis. Yeah, I don't need that monkey on my back anymore. Unconscious, periodical unconsciousness. Periodical unconsciousness. Falls over, I guess, in the middle of a ball game or something when he's at bat. So sleeplessness, thoughts, activity of the mind. Sleeplessness from uh, uh, thoughts. In, in, uh, you know, it's like he can't, he can't go to sleep because he's thinking so much. You know, right? So this is along with many other symptoms. There's, there's how many symptoms? Let's see, I guess I didn't put the note down here. I want to scroll back. But there's like a couple of thousand symptoms associated in the traditional materia medica for fluoride. Okay, where do we get it? Where do you get, where do you get it? 
you want at any any good pharmacy you'll have as much as you want antidepressant drugs tap water and well water toothpaste try to find some toothpaste that isn't uh, fluoridated some non-fluoridated toothpaste good luck you know cookware it's in teflon you know it's got that hardness to it. it's very hard right and it's got an affinity for certain things so it'll stick to cookware Uh, the jet going overhead. That sounded kind of weird. Insecticides. Tea, especially powdered tea. Look at the... Um, Alex Jones on one of his websites has a thing on fluoride. It's either Prison Planet or or um, what's the other one? Um, Infowars is another one of his, right? So Alex Jones has, done, has an interesting website where he lists all these all the, the fluoride content for various things and the tea the, the fluoride content for tea is very high but the, for some reason the fluoride content for powdered tea is outrageous it's just through the roof man it's like and and they they give an example i read an example somewhere of some woman who drank too much powdered tea and her bones began to crumble <laughs> she got brittle bones and brittle bones is one of the triddle one of the uh, uh traditional symptoms of fluoride poisoning. Another source of fluoride is, um, a lot of fluoride is wine. Grapes, you know, they probably use it. They probably use fluoride as, as an insecticide on grapes. They probably spray it on the grapes, you know. So, you know, and once again, we're obviously over fluoridating ourselves. Once again, for the enrichment of a few, at the expense of everybody else, including the few. <laughs> they don't know that they're killing themselves. Oh, there's, yeah, there's 2,491 symptoms listed in the uh, re repertory of the Materia Medica for fluoride. You know, that's how, that's how, they, how much they've studied this for it. You know, for, I mean, there's other substances like sulfur that's got all, over 11,000 symptoms listed for it. You know, hey, what's sulfur good for? Well, here's a book. You know. Well, what's well, what about what about fluoride? What what's the deal? You know, what what does that do? Well, here's a book. You know, well, it's a pamphlet compared to the book. All right. So now, there's one other thing that I want to put you onto. I want to tip you off to. And that is the extent of damage that can be done theoretically with chlorine. Chlorine's another halogen. Fluorides are fluorine, from which fluoride is taken as a halogen, like chlorine, and chlorine's a halogen. So there's some similarities here. But when chlorine hits organic matter, it forms chloroform. And chloroform, in our traditional med materia medica, has a psychological effect for causing a person to have a desire to kill. Desire to kill. We need more study we need a better study of what these substances are doing to us and we got to get a grip okay get a grip <laughs>